Welcome to season one, two, three, four, five of Meet the Drapers, the world's largest international business plan competition. We're going global. We traveled the globe scouring the US, India, Taiwan, Portugal, Canada, and Brazil for their best and brightest entrepreneurs. This is amazing. Every week, these entrepreneurs will compete against their countrymen for a chance to make it to our international semifinals and then on to finals to compete for a $1 million investment from Tim Draper himself. The crystal ball ultimately chooses. But here's the twist. Your favorite business eliminated too early? Vote them back into the finale to get a second chance in front of judges Tim, Polly and Bill Draper as well as their VIP guest judges. Let the games begin. Welcome everybody to Meet the Drapers. This is our fifth season. We can't believe we're still on the air, but it is awesome. We also have four judges who you've seen before. Andy is at Draper Associates as my partner, but we have an amazing guest judge today, Peter Diamandis. Peter is extraordinary as a futurist. He is a New York Times bestseller with two books, and he's now also a venture capitalist with Bold Ventures. Peter, welcome to the Thank show. You. Thank you, Tim. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what the future holds. Absolutely, it probably holds a lot of dancing on the show and a lot, and a lot, of, cel a lot of celebration. That was last episode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I think that's about it for now. Yeah. Uh, but the, if the music comes on, I'm up. You know, listen, we're living in the most extraordinary time ever in human history. We're gonna become a multi-planetary species, we're gonna be living in the you know, multiverses, and I think we're going to be adding 20 or 30 healthy years on people's lives and intercepting a whole slew of technologies that add another 20 or 30 healthy years on your life. So the question is, how long do you want to live? Well, I mean, if you, if I, you could, if I could bring you back I want 20 to years, go another 20 years. Okay, you're going to do that for me. That's the goal. He's working uh, the, on si it. the science today uh, shows us that it's possible to slow, stop, and possibly reverse aging. You have the same genes you had at birth, at age 20, at 40, at 60, at 80, at 100, and so that control of which genes are on and off. Uh, is believed to be the key to being able to reverse age, to bring you back to a period of earlier homeostasis. You heard it here first. There we are. Terrific. Okay, so let's bring on our first entrepreneur. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. We teach computers how to interact with you rather than you having to learn the limitations of a computer. We are a female-led founder company in hard tech. There are not a lot of um, us around. So I hope to be a role model um, to inspire other women to pursue the STEM career, to pursue leadership role, or to take the plunge um, and you know, run their own startup. Personally, being able to go ahead and share this journey with my wife, Sherry, it allows us to go ahead and like have each challenge be another adventure that we go ahead and take together. So let's hear from our first entrepreneur, Neural Lab. Give us your pitch. We at Neural Lab, we are defining the future of human computer interface. And it looks something like this. Remember the movie Minority Report where Tom Cruise used air gesture oh, yeah. to manipulate crime scene data? We bringing this to reality. While our vision is inspired by sci-fi, the genesis of our company happened because of the pandemic. We were caring for an immunocompromised family member and we were really concerned for the lack of touchless and sterilized solutions out in public. We decided to use a camera to translate your hand motion into mouse and keyboard input. Unlike existing solution, which requires specialized sensor camera and years of integration effort, 
you can get our solution working in five minutes without writing a single line of code. Beyond demand spurred by the pandemic, like point of sales, kiosks, there are also a lot of unmet demand in highly sterilized environments such as medical, operating room, and doctor's offices. Our uh, technology is able to go ahead and replace hand-based control. As much as people want to go ahead and experience AR and VR experiences, um, you're still tethered to reality doing something with a game controller. Ours, you can have like free form. Oh, that's going to be interesting. So you can be free form. You don't have to hold on to those two little weapons that you've got. That's right. No controllers to run out of batteries, to lose or get angry and destroy. Who's your customer here? Our initial strategy is licensed to OEM because that allows us to reach uh, the greatest number of customers. Uh, but eventually, we plan to offer this as a SaaS solution where you can just download off the web like Zoom um, and have it working on any camera. And then the third phase of our um, strategy is to offer it as you know, an API um, for, as, for developers. Where are you in terms of uh, any kind of intellectual property protection on this? And have you sold any of these yet? Yeah, we actually pre-revenue, but we do have over 10 customers um, testing our product um, currently. And we are also you know, in discussion with the Fortune 200 companies. We have filed patents over a large number of IP that we have. Because this technology has been around for a while, we have things that allow us to go ahead and uh, de determine if it's an intentional interaction versus an unintentional interaction. If you're doing a critical transaction in a hospital or you're doing a financial transaction, you want to go ahead and be sure that no one can go ahead and maliciously do something. We also have patents around being able to go ahead and smooth the interaction. So just as you know in, uh, intuitively to close a distance quicker to shake someone's hand and when you get closer to use your visual cues to negotiate the last couple of inches, we do that. How long have you been in business? It's been a year since we launched. Is there a, am I starting to have to learn a new language with my hands? in order to communicate with a computer. We envision, you know, in the future, when we move to the 3D metaverse world, it would be like you're interacting with the real world. If you're a surgeon, you, you would just like, you know, practice operating metaverse with your hand uh, versus, you know, using joystick uh, or game controllers. Can you give us an example of what a license agreement looks like, what, what you get, what they get? So our initial strategy with OEM is just, you know, strictly yearly license per unit per users. And as far as, you know, interaction with end user, I think that's going to be dependent on the contract. Um, ideally, I mean, we, we will be collecting data from the end users, but we eventually, you know, do plan to introduce to direct to consumer um, also, you know, as a platform for developer. I'm curious, in 10 years, how, how big do you think this company becomes in terms of revenue or market cap? So in 10 years, we, we think this is going to be a um, 400 billion annual revenue potential. If we're successful, your children, grandchildren will never know what a mouse is. How big are you now? <laughs> Not you just started. Million. You just started. <laughs> Has started. anybody signed a license agreement with you? We have some uh, partnership contract in place, um, but actual sales contract, we hope to start collecting those in the next quarter. How do you divide uh, your responsibilities? She's the, CT the CEO, I'm the CTO. So um, the business side, um, she focuses on. I do more of the exploratory portion of like the, the technology. You guys are great. This is a really major breakthrough in, the, in gestures. But anyway, thank you very much. Oh no, we don't use our hands. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Terrific. So what did you all think of Neurolab? Well, you can tweet me at Tim Draper and tell me what you thought of Neurolab or you can just listen to the judges. So Peter, what did you think of Neuralab? I was about to tweet you, but I'll, I'll, I'll say it wrong. <laughs> My biggest concern is they don't have a use case to focus in on yet. Because I don't buy the use case right now of what launches the immunocompromised at home and so forth. But someplace there is, on your phone, on your machine, at home in some way, there's going to be a great use case. So if I were them, I'd be they thinking about- They said something about medical. Like, you yeah, know, a surgeon me, yes, doesn't want to go over I, there and touch anything. They just could, said, hey. Could well, could well be in the medical arena, and uh, I know the companies they should speak to. But um, 
I almost would love to see them open source it and let a thousand entrepreneurs experiment with it. Ooh, Holly, what'd you think? I would say its first incarnation would be video games, that, that mm -hmm. people would be really excited about the video game that had that was touchless and had already there some. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Andy, what did you think? Right, so that this is a perfect segue. I think there are existing solutions using hardware. The question is, are these software-only solutions as accurate as these laser bays, for instance, or sometimes people wear sensors? Well, let's bring on our next entrepreneur. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. You know, being an entrepreneur is one of the hardest jobs in the world, I think, because we have to believe in something that does not exist yet, and we have to create something out of nothing. There's a lot of disappointment, right? Not everybody sees the world we do. Not everybody believes the way we believe. Waking up every morning, even after a very discouraging day, and then going back out there, you know, you have to, like, muster up that courage every single day and that uh, belief to go forward. I have three kids, and I see that I wanna create a future that they're very excited to live in. Um, I also wanna be a great role model for my daughters. I have two girls and I want them to grow up and know that they can be entrepreneurs, that they can create a world and that nothing can stop them. You're gonna get knocked down 10 times, but you have to get up 10 times every single time. The world needs your ideas. Put that idea together, build a company, dare to do it. You will find amazing people along the way that will help and take it where you need it to go. So as a part of making Meet the Drapers even more fun, even more fun than it is, we have instituted a new game. It's called Draper X, and you can download it on the iPhone or on Google Play. You can participate. And so while you watch Meet the Drapers and you see these great entrepreneurs present, you can invest your funny money into those companies. And if your company goes and becomes a Semi-finalists, you get 5x on your money. If in the semi-finals, your company moves up to the finale, you get another 5x on your money. If your company ends up winning, you get another 10x on your money. So we're gonna have a leaderboard, and the winners are gonna get big prizes from Meet the Drapers. I hope you'll download the game. It's called Draper X, and you'll play it with us and be a part of Meet the Drapers. At botco.ai, Rebecca Clyde is our entrepreneur. Rebecca, give us your pitch. Three hours. That is how long I had to wait on hold the last time I made a doctor's appointment for my daughter. See, the problem is that as our healthcare needs have increased with vaccinations and testing and mental health issues on the rise, the number of people on the other side to handle those requests has dwindled. We are making it as easy to get appointments and answers as it is to text a friend. We're focused on selling our product to high volume, multi-location health and wellness organizations that have complicated workflows like insurance verification, appointment and record requests. Let's say for example, that you were recently in an accident. And yeah, we have, we're, <laughs> we're familiar with that. <laughs> right, and maybe you're just gonna have a lot of ongoing physical therapy and rehab types of appointments. Well, you're gonna have a lot of questions like maybe, will my insurance cover this? To what extent? For how long? What appointments do I need? What if instead of having to wait on hold and make a ton of phone calls and play phone tag, you could simply chat, send a text message, and instantly get your appointment without ever having to make a single phone call. So the bot in Botco is for a, a bot. Exactly. And your value proposition is on both sides of the equation, right? If I'm a multi-center care facility, I could get away with less humans in the loop with Botco? Exactly, because now you have technology that can answer all the questions instantly and you don't have to staff a huge front desk or call center team. When I go into a doctor's office, the one thing I hate more than anything else in the world is filling out oh the goodness. same information yes. over and over <laughs> and over again. Wait, I don't think you've had a PET scan. <laughs>
No, I haven't had a, I haven't had a pet scan. I've had a pet. No, but it's that's it's slightly insane. worse. But mm -hmm. it's in the same realm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly right. So you'll prevent that. I am here to prevent all of that, so that you so. only enter the data one time, because we integrate with EHR systems. So the reason we're HIPAA compliant is so that we can connect into systems of record like an EHR where that data is held, and you don't have to re-enter it again. And so what we have focused on is building a proprietary technology that can instantly answer the question, understand the intent, even the sentiment, and then also be able to know what to do with the question. Do I need to verify somebody's insurance, get a pre-authorization? Do I need to schedule them? Do I need to update the record? Those are all of the things that are made possible once you can truly understand what the person is asking and you can understand how to actually fulfill that request. So does the hospital pay you or does the patient pay you or both? The healthcare and wellness providers pay us. So we sell our software to them. They implement this so that their uh, consumers and patient interactions are all handled using our product. How do you distinguish yourselves from all the other ones? So most of the bots that you've seen might just be able to answer a question like, what are your hours? Where do you park? But being able to answer a question about insurance verification and tell you if you're covered, to what extent, what is your insurance going to actually accept in terms of this visit, that is unique and we're the only provider and the only software company that can do that today. Rebecca, how long have you been around? How long have you been building this? How big is your team? We launched our product in 2020. We started building it prior to that in 2019. We are a team of 25. Most of our engineers um, make up about half of our team are in the Toronto area, which is the hub of AI. So we now have over 20 health and wellness organizations using us, including the largest drug and alcohol treatment centers in the United States, the largest massage clinic uh, franchise in the United States, and the largest urgent care franchise. I like are your, all using I like your rocket and your 3X growth. <laughs> yes, that's right. We tripled our business last year. We're on track to triple it again this year. We're in the million dollar club already for revenue and we're handling millions of questions every single month on behalf of our customers on all of these topics. You must have reasonable margins since you're a, a software business. Yeah. What are you running margin wise? <laughs> or, or what do you expect to be running margin wise? No, we're already running, our gross margins are over 90%. Those are good margins. Yes, I yes, like those. they are. <laughs> when you charge the, the hospital or alternative medicine mm -hmm. group or whoever, Yes you are um, charging a SaaS fee, just, Exactly, right? we, are, we use a SaaS business model, But correct. you don't charge a per question? No, we don't, not anymore. We, we tested that at the beginning, but what we realized, especially with a pandemic, that it was too hard to predict how many questions would come in on any given day. And so what we do now is price it based on product capabilities. So depending on what capabilities in our product they like to use, they scale up in pricing. And so a customer that might be using a, a two-way integration with an EHR system and that wants to use our sentiment analysis capabilities and wants to use our advanced conversation analytics, they're gonna be paying full price for the enterprise plus solution versus somebody who maybe just needs a basic FAQ type of chatbot. Do you find your ability to uh, bring customers back on time uh, can drive increased revenues? And do you have any kind of a pharma plug-in to help people with their prescriptions and such? Yes, we have been shown to help increase the number of encounters that a provider can generate using our product. In fact, they've A-B tested us where they have you know, one set of customers using our product and one set not. And they've seen that they can generate 100% more revenue when we're involved. So they love that product because it generates more revenue at a lower cost for them. Now to answer your question about pharma, we don't have a pharma customer yet, but we're working on a few in our pipeline because there, there are a lot of questions from doctors when a new drug is being introduced where they might have questions and so having a chat experience that can help manage that is very helpful. How much capital have you brought in to get a company to this point? Uh, we've raised 3.6 million to date. Okay. And what valuation was your last? Uh, my last valuation was at 20 million. What do you imagine the business in 10 years? Oh, I love that question. That's the same question every time. <laughs> <We're>, yes. <laughs> we see ourselves as becoming the category leader in conversational AI. Right now, we're very focused on health and wellness, but we see us longer term being able to take over the entire industry with our product. Terrific. Thank you so much, Rebecca.
Well, what did our judges think of Bodco AI? Andy, why don't you start? These healthcare organizations, they use these huge incumbent software companies such as Epic, and they're entrenched. It's very difficult for new players to come in. I was very impressed by their ability to penetrate into those accounts. My suspicion is that they're attacking the long tail, smaller independent outfit. And alternatives. Alternatives. So they I think like it's quite clever. They were like massage people and acupuncture. And then what is that? Emergency critical care, right? Oh, right. It's an interesting business strategy in addition to being an interesting product. So I, I kind of like it. Dad, what do you think? I like it very much. I thought I thought she was terrific. Polly, what do you think? I like that it was a woman CEO and I like that she was so dynamic. I'm with you about filling out all the forms. Oh my God. <laughs> and how long you have to wait. I would go to a doctor's office, especially if they did, if they said, if no they forms said, to fill out. We don't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'd we don't extra. have to do that. <laughs> yeah. I'd have the PET scan. Yep. What'd you think of Bob uh, Coe? I liked it a lot. I, I liked her uh, a lot, her energy. Uh, this market is so massive and so ripe for disruption. Right? I think there'd be many, many winners. And I think if really what she can do is if she can get enough of the long tail and market share, someone will buy her to, to wrap it all in. I really liked her. I thought that was terrific. I have seen a ton of these bots that are trying to help doctors, hospitals, whatever. And so I'm a little less excited about the market, although she has gotten to a million dollar run rate, which is, and it's she's going around there. She's going around the periphery, yeah. which is a good idea when you're a SaaS business to start with smaller companies to become your customers so you can work your way up to the big ones. The big ones will crush you because they'll spend so much time on it before they Is it possible in. she could be massively successful and never even touch the big ones? I, why Maybe. not? Sure, sure. Well, that's two. Let's move on to our third contestant, but before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. In today's world, the brands are dictating the trends. Well, as I believe that the power of fashion trends has to be there with the people who wear them on a regular basis. We are empowering fashion creators to create looks for every occasion that you want to wear. How can we change this? This is where Hot Not comes in. Follow me on Twitter. I'm at Tim Draper. If you got a great idea, go ahead and send it to me. And who knows, you might be the next big contestant. We'll be right back after this. So let's hear from our next contestant. It's Frederick from Hot Not. Frederick, give us your pitch. At Hot Dot, we are on a mission to empower one million fashion creators to curate fashion looks for every occasion. We are doing this by the ready, uh, readily available supply of 100k stylists of fashion graduates every year. On the other hand, 400 million Gen Z users in India can sign up with their height, body type, skin tone, and get matched with these creators to find quick purchase links and styling tips. With every interaction of swiping hot or swiping not, our AI suggests personalized fashion feed. And they can also use our super checkout to save their time, money, and privacy. Additionally, they can also hire stylists at a very minimal, affordable cost. I dream of a fashionable India, guys. A day where finding fashion or hiring a stylist is not a luxury anymore, but a simple service on Hot Knot for their first dates, interviews, weddings, or for any occasion in their lives. That's Hot Knot for you. So how does this work? You put your fashion up on social media and then they say, does this look good or not? Or what, is that the idea? Yes, Hot Knot is a simple mobile app. They can sign up, they can upload their social media looks or their regular day-to-day -day OOTD fashions. Users can sign up with their height, weight, body type, and style types. Once they sign up, they'll automatically get matched with these creators. And how do you make money? Is it just referrals on the, when they swipe up? Today, brands and partners are selling directly on Hot Knot with 5 to 30% commission. Additionally, users can pay a dollar to hire a stylist for 10 minutes on-demand styling service. They'll come online and they'll help you to give you a buying assistance or help you to get some fits and outlooks 
to get ready for your date. What kind of revenues do you have right now? We made, uh, in dollars, we made $13,000 in the last four months. And how many users have, have you had on the platform? 12,000 users. 12,000, so a dollar per user you've made in that yes. regard. Yes. And, yes. and, and how, what's your plan to scale to millions of users? In the last four months, all we did is we picked 14 colleges. We announced Campus Queen Challenge, where creators came up with their styling looks and users swiped hot to make them the queen of the campus. How do you get people voting and how do you get people to know about it and take pictures of themselves and go on this thing? As a speaker, I spoke in more than 250 colleges previously with my previous startup. This time, I'm announcing it to the world through our partners like MyGate and Grabon, and also announcing challenges, right? Events in different colleges and communities of India. Did the investors make money on your previous startup? Yeah, we made them so happy. Uh, an early investor who invested just uh, about $15,000, he made more than 20X at the final exit. We sold it to a very strategic partner of US called Colosseum Group, where every investor, even from the first investor to the last investor, everyone are happy at the end of the day. You are doing this on college campuses. As of now. That's how you wanted to get it kind of virally moving. Don't you need specific people that are, that are kind of fashion forward to be your uh, leaders of it? You know, the ones that people's, they're like influencers for the rest. Today in India, there are 1,200 fashion colleges. Every year, there are 100K fashion graduates graduating from a college. These people will come up with the looks initially as a fashion creator because these are the people which get the invite codes initially. But we are not stopping there. We are going to every influencer, as you said. They can also join us in this mission to empower the fashion revolution in India. Hey, I want to ask about something a bit more um, boring. How do you deal with the supply chain? Uh, who makes the clothes? Do you keep inventory? How, who does the shipping? Can you just explain to us how the, all that works? All the e-commerce players today in the market, there are Mintras, there are Flipkarts, there are Amazons of India, right? Every person who purchases on these things, they can put up a post on Hotnot with curation and personalization. So technically Flipkart or somebody could just create a feature or a community of influencers that would do exactly this. We are creating on top of different commerce app. Any commerce app today, if they want to create this kind of thing, that are limited to that particular commerce app. I see. And your margin is what again? Five to 30% as a basic as a basic affiliate partner, we'll get 5%, which is already we are getting it as of now but there are direct sellers who can give us 30%, and as resellers, we're also getting 12 to 15 percentage. Frederick, thank you so much for being on Meet the Drapers. High five. You're all thank high you, five sir. That way. We're calling in from <laughs> India. Judges, what did you think? Andy, what did you think? My Silas is my wife, uh, and, and I, since w you know, we have our kids now, it seems like everybody is my stylist. Everybody gives me comments. So I've, I think I'm pretty well covered. Are they swiping <laughs> right know. or left on you? Usually it's not. <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, it's the left swipe. <laughs> it's a pretty thin margin business, so I don't know how they could make more money from these retailers. Yeah, it's all referrals based on people yeah. swiping up. I think he's trying to get something like Stitch Fix in India. I think that's what his goal is. Peter, what do you think? I loved his energy, loved the enthusiasm. Uh, I love the agility, I like the market area. I see nothing defendable, unless he's got some special connection with the creator community, which I don't hear. Well, we're about to see our fourth entrepreneur. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. There's a lot of needs that not satisfied by current product, especially that people they use social media and dating apps to present themselves as perfect, but there's no place that where they can just be themselves and create really deep and genuine connections. We are dreaming about a world where uh, introverts will have exactly the same social powers as extroverts. You can share your deep and hot moments 
and connect with each other, connect with new friends. There's still a lot of people in this world that they really need this kind of safe haven to share and express all their feelings and emotions and really want to get rid of this social isolation and connect with real person. Coming to us from Paris and Taiwan, we have Paul and Kays, and they're gonna tell us about Ruit. Paul, Kays, go ahead, give us your pitch. I was painfully socially awkward when I was younger. For years, I frequently feel lonely and isolated. And it seems like there's no one understood me. Turns out I'm not the only one. 79% of Gen Z are reported feeling lonely and emotionally isolated. Ruit is here to solve this. We are on the mission to combat this loneliness and social isolation. We build a friend making app that powered by AI personality that help facilitate emotional connections by machine learning your preferences and guiding the conversation with other users. Imagine you just meet a new friends online and we bring you guys into a virtual bar chat room where our AI bartender chatbot helps start a conversation like he's a caring friend, a wingman, and our AI recommend suitable questions to your sense of connection makes overcoming initial social awkwards not much easier. Rui has over 1 million users around the world and it creates 300,000 matches every day. Our users, they spend 15 minutes per day higher than Facebook and Snapchat. And users exchange 4 million messages every day and they love our AI wingmen. So they summon them over 100,000 clients every day. As a result, Rui has 15% day 30 retention. That's 3x higher than industry standard. Our business model is very simple, that for B2B, we provide robust conversational advertising and opinion mining solution to consumer brands. And for B2C, people, they can pay for subscription to have more superpower and make more friends on our app. What is your geographic reach today? Where are you uh, operational? We have currently 80% of our uh, user database in, uh, in Asia, and especially in uh, Taiwan and uh, some, of the, some of them also in uh, Singapore and Malaysia. And now we are moving uh, to uh, Morocco and uh, more Middle East. Do you just stay as avatars? Our users, they tend to maintain these relationships purely online, but some of them still will meet offline. Is this more of a chatting operation or email? Uh, how real time is it? Is it English? Uh, what, is you, do you have translation services? How do you go across border, across language? It's a chatting service and we support three kind of language now, Mandarin, English and French. In different regions and different language, we have different kind of topics. So for example, in Taiwan, we have like uh, LGBTQ topics and also university students topic. And in the States, that we also have uh, gross confession topics and university student co topics. How do you make money? Or do people sign up monthly or just per connection or what? We have two main revenue streams. First is for B2B part and second is the B2C part. So thanks to our AI moderator, that actually we can put in some like a nudging questions in the conversation. We call that as a conversational advertising and also like uh, collecting data to re become a report as, uh, to the consumer brands, the B2C part. People, they can buy the monthly subscription and for monthly subscription, they don't have any limitation on the app. So for example, they can freely send uh, unlimited DMs, link freely to see who liked them, something like this kind of features. How much do they pay for that? We have 1.2% pay rate and uh, average revenue per paying user is at 18 US dollar. What is the typical user or do you ever know? We do a lot of user interview and survey and also observe that through data very hard. So actually we understand users pain point very much. They are more socially anxious and they are more shy. They cannot easily express themselves very well in reality. They also want to confess something here. So we have a very good moderation system by the, the AI and also by the role base and also by the community. So they group a community that 40 people, they keep moderating the contents, moderating the bad, uh, bad people. So to make the environment can be clean and people, they can really create genuine connections. Are you able to check which users 
are repeating and staying with you and and what's your drop off rate we track all uh, of our metrics in a very detailed way and in a very granular way so we know who are the users that are uh, staying who are the users that are churning and we make users go into specific cohorts so that we target them once they churn or once they go through a specific uh, uh, pattern of events on the app well thank you so much paul and kays and ruit thanks for being on meet the drapers so what did all of you think of ruit peter what did you think of this one i think there's a real need for this. I think that uh, a lot of socially awkward, digitally first native uh, individuals will get value out of this. It seems like something that, uh, that every other tech company should and would be doing at some point. So uh, impressed by their, by their million users, but not by their MRR at 43K a month. Right now, it seems it seems very low. I'm not sure I'd put my money into it. Holly, what'd you think? I thought they were adorable, <laughs> the two guys. I love them, and I felt that they'd overcome their social awkwardness because they'd embarked on this. But I also wondered if was it helpful to socially awkward people to put them in a position where they don't have to ever go mm. out in <laughs> the world? What'd you think, Dad? I'd like to dig more into that uh, element of uh, who their market is and how much they're selling, but I liked it. Andy, what'd you think? I'm no wingman expert. <laughs> um, you know what intrigues me is this. How do you grow this community if you have a group of people who are shy? How do you get new members? Why don't we bring these entrepreneurs in? We'll go through each one and we'll see how it all comes out. So as a part of making Meet the Drapers even more fun, even more fun than it is, we have instituted a new game. It's called Draper X and you can download it on the iPhone or on Google Play you can participate. And so while you watch Meet the Drapers and you see these great entrepreneurs present, you can invest your funny money into those companies. And if your company goes and becomes a semi-finalist, you get 5X on your money. If in the semi-finals, your company moves up to the finale, you get another 5X on your money. If your company ends up winning, you get another 10X on your money. So we're gonna have a leaderboard and the winners are gonna get big prizes from Meet the Drapers. I hope you'll download the game. It's called Draper X, and you'll play it with us and be a part of Meet the Drapers. So we've seen four really extraordinary entrepreneurs today. We've gotta to choose one. That one will move on to the semifinals. And the other ones, they can keep working at it. They might come back for another season. You never know. With these four, we had a really difficult choice. Let's start with NeuroLab. You two have created something really great and it's clearly solved a, a really interesting problem for people who can't touch things. It looks like it might also help solve a problem in VR. Our concerns were all about all the competition that's out there and how many other people are doing things with cameras and and gestures. Botco, Rebecca, you are a dynamo. It was really fun seeing that presentation. It's very exciting. I was very concerned personally that bots are everywhere, but your progress has been so extraordinary and you've connected with all of these smaller hospital-like places. Frederick on Hot Knot, we thought it was a really fun presentation. We think that in India, style will become a big deal. I think you're hitting kind of a nice nice wave there. Our concerns were really that it's going to be very difficult to defend and maybe not as big a market as some of the other entrepreneurs that we've looked at. And Paul and Kay's, we were really excited to hear from you too. We do think that there is a model there that really works and I know particularly in Asia 
Uh, they, they pride themselves on being a little shy. One thought was that you'd spend all your time in the multiverse and no time in the physical verse and maybe never actually get to, get to connect physically with that partner because you were so into Ruit. We did have a very difficult choice. And so we've got to go to the crystal ball. I'm feeling it. Eeny, beeny, chili, beeny. Who wins it? Botco.ai <laughs> is our winner. Congratulations, Botco. Oh, very you. well done, thank Rebecca. Thank you very much. And I hope the rest of you will keep in touch and send us, uh, send us your business plans because you never know. Uh, and businesses take evolutionary steps and they move along at different paces. And, and when you hit that moment, we're gonna be all over it. So uh, great to have you, congratulations. And thank you for being on Meet the Drapers. I'm so excited I won. It was a lot of work getting to this point. It's really exciting, and especially to be in, such, in front of such a wonderful group of investors that are so highly regarded. So we're excited at Baco AI to be able to move forward to the next round and hopefully get that million dollar prize at the end. future with our tech, AI, VR, Bitcoin is the best, we'll build and work and grow with you, having fun along the way, we'll change the world for better, meet the